Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss and probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on. Yep, one of our favorite subjects murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects baking and killers? Hello, Karen Devaney. Hello, Ann Bonna. How's Anne it with the E? <laughs> Marner E? How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. I am very, very excited today because I'm taking on a challenge. Nice. So, um... It's always good to challenge yourself in the kitchen. I think sometimes we get set in, you know, the recipes that we make all the time. Yes. And occasionally it's good just to boost your confidence and step outside your comfort zone. I agree. And it's also really good for your brain. And yes. we're at the age where we really need to worry about yes. our brain health. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So, um... I'm going to be noisy for a while, and I apologize, but this is a several-step process. I am making a French silk pie. Oh, my word. So I'm so of, excited. That is one of my all-time favorite pies. Me, too. Yeah. And I've always dreamed of being able to make it, mm. and I've never really been adventurous enough to do it. Yeah. So now I'm just throwing all caution to the wind. It may or may not turn out. We'll see. We'll let you know if it doesn't yeah, turn out. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, I mean, we should be upfront honest with everything that we cook. So, so anyway, to be honest with you, if you get the ingredients right and it's not scrambled eggs, it, that's good. But that we're, is we're the good. absolute thing that I fear the most. The tempering of the eggs. Yes, because yeah. you, you've you got chocolate that you heat up. You melt your chocolate. You have whipping cream that you whip up into stiff peaks, and you have tempered eggs and sugar and wow. they all have to cool to the right temperature before you add one to the other like you have to cool the eggs before you put it in the chocolate right and then you have to cool that to a certain point so that you can add your whipped cream right so that that doesn't break i mean right. it's, it really is kind of very a, technical it's a little bit technical and i'm a little bit nervous but and, and and you even have to use a a thermometer to yes to get it the right temperature nice yes so it's going to be an adventure it will be right now i'm melting chocolate so it's going to be and when i do it in the microwave i never want to scorch my chocolate so i do it at 20 or 30 second yeah intervals and then i stir 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 yeah so you're going to hear that going off a little bit just everybody ignore it no that's what i'm doing and i'm not heating up a hot pocket <laughs> and um we're we are drinking some bloody marys we are. today we're, Thank we're you. enjoying some bloody marys last night um i hosted a it's a cook-in a cook-in definitely yeah. a cook-in um last night for the fourth of july and Anne came and my kids came and my daughter's boyfriend and of course my husband is always invited because he lives with me and um my dogs were there so <laughs> we did a little shindig and i Gave my, my sister a Bloody Mary. It was so good. I asked for another one today. <laughs> yes, they are very good. So we're drinking some Bloody Marys. We and are, we're using, um, if I'm not mistaken, you're using the, the Charleston Bloody Mary mix. Yes, it's bold, and it's the Charleston Bloody Mary it's mix. It's really, it's very really good. good. I know that Total Wines sells it. Yes. It'd be nice if they would sponsor us. It, it would be. We'll have to get in touch with them and find out what's yeah, the problem. Yeah, because I would drink it every single time we record. Yeah. I wouldn't have a problem with That's it. That's exactly so, right. And we're using Tito's Vodka today if they wanted oh, to sponsor right. us. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be, we'll have to give them a shout out on social media and see if we can get in touch with them. Yeah, that'd be great. If anybody has any hookups in those two companies, let us know. Yeah, for sure. So, I assume you're going to talk about murder. I am. I am. I'm going to okay. talk about murder while yeah. you... Do magic in my kitchen. I'm so excited. Yeah, glam it up in the kitchen today. I have 100% confidence that you will be fine. I have. Mm, I blame Mary real good. Yeah. I have 100% confidence that I will have something made. Mm -hmm. I will tell people that we 
pre-baked the we pre-did the crust part yeah we didn't do a homemade crust we didn't do a homemade crust and we went ahead and pre-baked it because it has to chill for quite a long time because it has to be cold when you put the ingredients in because what i didn't know about french soap pie is all the ingredients get cooked before it gets put in the pie shell right so then it just has to and then it just cool. has to cool and right. it actually has to cool overnight a minimum of six hours so what will probably happen is we'll take a pause and tomorrow we'll probably taste this pie and add it on to the podcast right. <laughs> <laughs> through the magic of the pause. Don't button. be fooled. I'll be down at her apartment at 10 o'clock tonight. I have pie. a feeling that the pie is going to be here, but I'm going to put an alarm on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. You don't have enough space I in your freezer. I don't have enough freezer space because oh, I had no. a meat delivery. So oh, no. I got pork loins out the yin-yang and I oh, don't wow. have any... Um, I don't have any space for what this kind pie. of meat delivery did you get? I do. Um, hello, Butcher Box, if you want to sponsor <laughs> us. <laughs> you do Butcher Box? I do Butcher Box. I don't do it. I do it just ad hoc as needed. I'm right. on a schedule. Right. Um, the last time that I did it, I did all beef and pork. Right. Uh, it, it's a lot of pork, a little bit of beef. I think I got two steaks out of the whole thing. Did you I like got, their steaks? I do like their steaks. I didn't think I was going to like it. But um, I actually loved it. It's grass-fed, organic. Right. It's nice. It's really nice. I made those the other night. I made Greek steak, and it was just delicious. I couldn't believe how well they turned out. Oh, good. I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah. And then I also got big packs of, like, four packs of beef tips. Oh, wow. So, I don't know. I mean, that sounds like a beef stroganoff adventure it to me. It does. It really does. And then does. I got some brown pork. I got one beef roast, I think, one pork roast, and then I got probably five of the smaller pork loins. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a whole lot. Oh, and I also got hamburger, but I gave that to our boys. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's grass-fed hamburger. It's very good. Good. But I gave, I gave it back to the boys a while That was back. nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to get so started on my go. murder. You make the magic happen in the kitchen, and we'll happen. see what happens in the end. Yes. All right. So, just before 9 o'clock on the night of July 18th, 2008, there was a phone call placed to the Gwinnett County 911. Gwinnett County. Gwinnett County is, is in Duluth, Georgia. <laughs> okay. The caller said that a lady who was sitting in her car had just been shot by a man oh. wearing khaki colored pants and a white t-shirt with green sleeves. Oh. He could see that the woman was still moving, so he thought she was still alive, but the man had taken off in her gold colored car. When the medics arrived at the scene, they found the woman laying on the ground covered in blood. They rushed her to the hospital and left the police to comb through the evidence. The problem was the only evidence was the woman's blood-soaked clothes. That's it. There was no ID on the woman. There were no shell casings on the ground. Clearly the crime scene had driven away with the man in the gold car. Wow. Isn't that awful? So no idea. They have no idea who this is. They don't woman even know is. who she is. So they can't get her next of kin. Right. To tell them there is an issue. Exactly. That's scary. So the police fan out and start looking for eyewitnesses who might have seen what happened. And they find someone at the bus stop that's close to the scene. A bus driver had been waiting to start her route. And she said the car had been sitting parked for several minutes when a man appeared, walked to the driver's side of the car, started yelling profanities, pulled out a gun, shot the driver, pulled the woman out of the car, and then he backed out of the lot and drove away. So, so there was an argument. Th there was some sort of a, an argument, yes. Okay. So the bus driver gave the same description of the shooter that the 911 caller gave. It was a man in khaki pants with a white shirt and green sleeves. Those green sleeves are standing out. <laughs> exactly. The shooting had taken place at a strip mall, so police started looking for surveillance <laughs> video. I say a strip club. Strip club, no. Strip mall. Okay. Which is kind of weird because it's, you know, really busy, right? Busy, and usually they have security cameras and right. lit parking lots. Right, right. So the police start going along looking for anybody who might have surveillance video, not just on the outside of the building, but also inside in case the man had gone in before or after the shooting to a store because they felt like... Somebody with a white shirt with green sleeves might stand out a bit. Mm-hmm. You would think. So, um, 
as they're fanning out and looking for a store with their surveillance camera, the lead detective gets a call notifying him that the victim didn't make it. Oh, wow. Now, that remember, they still don't know who this woman is because she had no ID on, on her when they found her. She had suffered a single gunshot that entered through her side, blew through her lung, her diaphragm, oh and her gosh. stomach. One shot. Wow. One shot. It's like the shot that killed JFK. Exactly. Six hours after the shooting, police received a missing persons report. I love this woman's name. Camelia Coleman. Oh, Camelia. Camelia. Called to say that her sister, Janaya, oh. had disappeared. She hadn't shown up to pick her daughter from work, mm. to pick her daughter up from work at 11, and no one could reach her by phone. And Camelia said it was completely out of character for Jan Janiah to not be in touch with people. Wow. She told police that she'd spoken to Janiah that night and that she, Janiah had gone and parked close to the bus station to use the free Wi-Fi oh. while she waited to pick her daughter up. Okay. Of course, the location rings, sets off alarm bells for the police, and now they know who their victim is. So police go, and they meet with Camelia, and they look at a picture of Janaya and listen to a description of her car, and now they know, okay, this is who we have. They tell Camelia at that point that Janaya had been shot, taken to the hospital, and unfortunately had passed away. Oh, I hate that. I know. Janiah Coleman was her name, 40 years old. She was the mother of three adopted children. She was a beloved school teacher. She had served in the military and was an active member in her church. She had been planning to open a preschool in the community within the next several months. While sitting at Camellia's dining room table, one of the detectives entered Janiah's license plate into a database to see if it had been flagged for anything. Almost immediately, um, a notice pops up, and there's a report, and it says an off-duty police, police officer had noticed a car park, parking in a parking lot of a closed strip mall. The man gets out and then walks away. Hmm. But the off-duty police officer approaches him and tells him that, you know, you can't park here because all the stores are closed. No parking on the dance floor, No buddy. parking, mister. Mm -mm. So the man, who's on the cell phone at the time, gets back into the car and drives away. But the off-duty police officer thinks there's something up with him and decides to run the tags on the car and puts in a report. But when he runs the tags and puts in his report, they've not yet entered the information about Janiah's carjacking. Oh, um, so police go to the area where that whole thing had taken place, and mm -hmm. they actually find Janiah's car a mile from where the off-duty officer had seen it. Police examine the car, they dust for fingerprints, and they look for any DNA evidence, and then the car is transported to a crime lab. They find unknown fingerprints on the driver's side door, like... If somebody comes up to your car and they kind of lean in, they've got their hand maybe oh, up yeah. on the top and yep. maybe down at the bottom. So it wasn't on the necessarily part where you open the door. Right, right, but right. But like he, somebody had leaned on the car. Okay. Lean a lean a lean. A little lean a lean, 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 lean. lean. Okay. Um, this is the best part to me of this, this whole terrible story. Oh. Because the detective describes this as the breath of God. Breath of God. The breath of God. Is that because he evidently out? the killer had smoked a cigarette oh. and flipped it out the window, <gasps> and unbeknownst to him, the damn butt flew back in the window and landed underneath the driver's side seat. Oh, DNA. DNA. I love DNA. The breath of God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. DNA on a smoked cigarette butt. That's right, girl. So, now they've got fingerprints, some DNA, and they put that DNA evidence into the CODIS database, but of course there's no match. Of course. Um, and I guess what happens with CODIS is you put your DNA information in, and 
if there's something recent that's been put in, it mm -hmm. will kind of give you like a quick pop back that says, okay, you got a match. Uh -huh. And then the system continues to so, break everything down and investigate further. And that yeah. can take months, even years. Usually it's like, it's like based on locality. So if you get a quick match, it's usually either something that's been recently put in or something that is um, in your, like kind of in your locality. Right. And then it starts to spread out and look for things. Right. So there's no match when they put the information in the CODIS database. Then they put the fingerprints in the database, but there's no match. Mm. So they turn back to surveillance cameras from the closest convenience store to the, to the crime scene. Mm -hmm. And bingo. They see a man fitting the killer's description, khaki pants, white shirt, green sleeves, come in and buy a 20-ounce beer. He leaves and comes back a few minutes later and buys another 20-ounce beer. Oh, so one wasn't enough. No, he, he's got 40 ounces of beer Good. within 30 minutes. He's playing Edward 40 ounce hands. <laughs> Whatever that game is the college, the college kids played. I've never Edward 40 ounce or something. Right. Yeah. So then he, he leaves, and then and a little bit later he comes back, and he buys a pack of cigarettes. Well, luckily this surveillance has sound on it, and the investigators hear the man ask for... Bronson Light Longs. I've never heard of Bronson Light Longs, but it's a it's a brand. Because okay. I think probably the big, big biggest thing with us is that we grew up in you know the Richmond, Virginia area, mm -hmm. and Philip Morris is a really big cigarette company around here. So maybe we don't see all the different brands. But yeah, could have been. I've not heard of that particular brand of cigarette. Not that I'm a smoker. No, but we have smokers <laughs> in our family. Right. So, luckily enough, they they get a match with that Bronson Light. Yeah. And you doing all right over there? I'm good. I'm okay. good. There's just a lot going on. Yeah. A, I know. I don't have a double broiler. My pants aren't cool. the right size, and she's trying to use a whisk and, and a candy thermometer. A candy and thermometer. I can't touch the bottom of this pan. Okay. Could you maybe pause and That's just come sure. help me? Yeah, I'm going to pause and see if I can help her out I need a little. A third hand. And we're back. We're back. I know. It, I mean, I'm just saying teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, my Lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> <That's high. laughs> Labor of love. But it's going to be worth it. Yes. Yeah, so I think I'll refresh myself with some bloody <laughs> Yes, blood. please do. All right. So this is where I left off. The man came in. He brought the Bronson Light long cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It matched the butt that they had found under the car. And they knew this was their man. Okay. So they decide to release the videotape to the public, hoping to find the man. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. So they release it. They got zero hits. Oh, my gosh. Nobody called the tip line. So now they're a month into the search for Janiah's killer, and they have fingerprints, DNA, and a picture. And that seems like a lot, but it's really not a lot, because if you don't have the person to match all of that to, you got nothing, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's good that they've got those things, but this is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. So a little more than a year passes, um, and they, the detective on the case gets a call. They now have a match in CODIS. Oh. Yeah. Some new DNA had been entered trout. No. No. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. So they've got a hit. CODIS comes back. There's newly entered DNA. So they've got the match. They're going to go find the dude. Guy's name, Donald Smith. Well, Donald. So investigators pull Donald Smith's file, and he's got quite a nasty criminal history. Well, <laughs> including surprise, surprise. Right, including bank robbery and armed robbery. So it's not a stretch to think he could carjack and murder someone, right? Absolutely. Right. So they pull up his mugshot and they can't help but notice the striking. Sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I know, but I'm just trying to get all this. I understand. Whoop cream off of here. So uh, there's a very 
similar, there, there's striking resemblance between the man on the videotape and Donald's mugshot. So oh. now they're like, we got you, man. It would be really convenient if Donald had on a white shirt with green sleeves and his actual mugshot. I know that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Oh. No. So they find, they find, they get it, find so, ugh. That, 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 that I'm going to take a sip of Bloody Mary. Up that tongue with some Bloody Ooh. Mary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yay. So they find Donald's cell phone number, mm -hmm. and they trace it to see if it had been active near the crime scene and the site where Janiah's abandoned car had turned up. And it had been. It had pinged off the towers right where... Janiah was murdered. Ha. Huh. And where the car was abandoned. So they've got a super solid case against old Donald. We got you, Donald. Donald, Donald come and not to carry you home. That's right. Investigators pick Donald up and arrest him for Janiah's murder. Donald. Of course, Donald said, Sorry. it wasn't me. No. He says, I I've never seen that lady for that car, mm -mm. and I ain't never killed anybody nope. in my life. Mm -hmm. Ain't never. And never. I all killers tell the truth. Never ever did I kill anybody. Never ever. So detectives are like, okay, roll the video. So they play the surveillance video for Donald, and he says, dude, that's not me. I don't even own a shirt that looks like that. Okay, Donald. It's not me. So then detectives lay out all the evidence. They say, listen, dude, We've got your DNA. We've got your fingerprints. There's just, there's no way, no how that it's not you. It's you. They give him a polygraph and he fails miserably, especially well, when they ask him the question, do you know who killed Janiah? So when they tell him he failed, Donald is visibly shaken. Because he thought he was a good liar. And he says, do you mind if I take a cigarette break? Right. I mean, you know. He's got some Bronsons. People got to smoke. So the detective says, sure, have a cigarette. Donald pulls out his cigarette, and they notice that he's smoking aqua blues. Excuse me? Aqua blues. Evidently, this is a type of cigarette that you roll yourself. Oh, that's fancy. So this is like the first little oh, thing. And, and they're, they're, like, rah, rah. they're like, okay, well, maybe he changed brands, right? Because well, I mean, that happens. Um, Donald is really starting to shake in his boots, and he's mm. very clearly upset. And he Aww. takes a deep breath, and he says, man, I lied to you. Really? I oh, do, my gosh. I do know the man on that videotape. Uh-oh. Brace yourself. That man is my twin brother it's the evil twin oh my god evil twin it's my twin they, brother they exist oh what donald smith in fact has an identical twin brother named ronald no uh lord of mercy. donald lord of mercy ronald mcdonald is <laughs> that what he means ronald mcdonald well here's the problem with identical twins they have same DNA, identical DNA, but Hold not identical fingerprints. Yeah, but listen, one of these jerks murdered Janiah. It's one of them. Now they got to figure out who did it. So of course, identical twins have identical DNA, but they do not have identical fingerprints because God said, "Uh, no, that's I'm not letting people get away with all the kinds of shit." So people are going to have different fingerprints. There are no two alike. I'm sure there are somewhere, and somebody will prove me wrong, but for the sake of this story, no two fingerprints are alike. So they are talking to Ronald, and they have him in his, if they have him in an interrogation room. He hands over the cell phone. Well, it turns out that he actually has the cell phone on him that was the cell phone that pinged in the area where Janiah was How murdered. convenient. Right. So... Ronald takes out a cigarette, and he lights one up, and by golly, it's a Bronson light. Oh! Ooh, Ronald, you are Ronald, in trouble. Ronald, you got on a shirt with green sleeves. Yes. They take his prints, and when you know, they match the prints from the car. Ronald is going down. Good. They've got audio, video, fingerprints, and a cigarette match. Now they need a confession. 
So the de- detective puts a picture of Janaya on the table and walks out of the room. Ronald picks up the picture and starts to apologize, saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, calls her beautiful, and when the detective comes back in, he says, guilty. Wow. Yep. February 5th, 2010, Ronald was arrested and charged with Janiah's murder. Slam dunk, right? I mean, it seems like it. Hell no. Oh. No. Even though Ronald said guilty, when he got to court, he said, not, not guilty. guilty. He told the court, it wasn't me, it was Donald. He said well, he, he was trying throwing to, his brother under the bus. He said he was trying to protect his brother, and that's why he said he did it. He said his fingerprints are on the car because he helped Donald clean after Janiah had been murdered. <gasps> that is so rude. He's doing that to his he is a true evil twin. Yeah. Yeah. His attorney was trying to throw that jury for a loop. Yeah, they a loopy loop. They a wanted loop-y. to make sure there was reasonable doubt. Yeah, well, now they didn't fall for it. Well, the jury said, oh, hell no, Ronald. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you are most definitely I mean, guilty. Who do you think you are trying to make us look wrong? <laughs> you are guilty of malice murder. Malice murder. Of, um, of hijacking a vehicle and of possession of a firearm. So, bye, Felicia. Bye for Donald. I mean, for Ronald. <laughs> you get life in prison plus 25 years. And he should get a lot more for Ryan about his twin. <laughs> like, that's, just, that's the worst part of this story. I except know. for Janiya. Is that her name? Yes. Jan- I love that name. Isn't that nice? Yes. Janiya. I like Janiya. But, I, I mean, she got the worst of it. But she after did. that, part of the, the investigation part, yeah. his twin got the worst of it. Yeah, and her family was devastated. I mean, this is a woman who's oh really gosh. doing great things in the community. Well, I mean, first of all, I would hope any family would be devastated to lose their loved one, but it's even worse when it's a person who is a do-gooder. Right. Like, you just think about all the lives they could have touched. Right. And they're not going to be able to. I mean, that's just rude. So, on July 13th, 2013... Janiah's family opened the Janiah Coleman Excellence Academy. Nice. Um, it's a preschool academy. Aww. They opened it with her mother is in Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana is the location. What is it? Elkhart, okay. Indiana. That's where her mom lives. Um, and that school is up and running. I did Aww. check out their website. There is a place on there if you feel like you want to do it you can make a donation to oh the school. that's wonderful so um that's not nice. yeah they they're when i checked yesterday they're still up and running so good job i um, love it on putting together a true legacy of love from that family yeah then they can that really speaks volumes about the person that they lost that yeah they go that extra mile to make sure that her legacy is preserved yeah so, so. Just I hope that somebody that's listening to us will make a donation to that school. Maybe one of our potential sponsors. Yeah, maybe. So. Maybe. Or maybe yeah. if we get sponsored, we could make a small donation to the school. But yes. we need to be sponsored. Absolutely. But yeah. Absolutely. So, wow. we're going to take a pause. Listen, i got to tell you where I'm with this pie. Okay. Where are you? Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm getting ready to mix the... The eggs that my sugar sister had to help me with, um, (laughs) we had to get them up to 160, and now they've cooled for 10 minutes, and I'm going to combine them into the melted chocolate. Ooh, yummy. Okay, and once I do that, then I'm going to add the creamed butter and sugar. Right. And then I'm going to, it's going to cool for another five or 10 minutes, Uh and then I'm going to fold in the, um, the, that, the, the, the whipped whip stuff. So I have the whip. I have the whipped cream. That's no sugar, and it's just plain cream whipped to to, to, peaks. to peaks. Okay. Yeah. So then I'll fold that in. Right. And then once that's all folded together, we pour it into the pie plate, into the pie crust. Right. And then we wrap it in plastic wrap, and that's what has to go in the refrigerator overnight. Yeah. Very Not the exciting. freezer, the refrigerator. Very refrigerator. exciting. Yeah. yeah, that whole egg situation, y'all, that was something. Well, I just think part of it is we didn't have the, the right tools. We don't have a double thing. boiler, so we yeah. were using two pans. And I think that this thermometer that we have is like a Megalodon thermometer. What? <laughs> it's huge. And usually, like, if, if we get a smaller one, see that clip? Yeah. You'd be able to clip it to the pan. That, 
that, that's what that's I for. That clip could move up and down. Does it not move I mean, up and it down? Does, but that would just look. Yeah, we really suffered through. Yeah, we did. That's okay. That's all right. We're but all we'll right. know next time to clip it to the to the. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever used a candy thermometer, so yes, I think we're, we're doing good we just are, to know where to put it. We talk a big story, but we're novice bakers. We, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we have fun baking. That's that's, that's the fun, reason yeah. that we want to include that's it. That's the only reason that we do. Because yeah. baking means love for yeah. us. So. I'm just so happy we don't have scrambled eggs to we go We don't have pie. scrambled eggs, and I think we killed all the bacteria. Oh, my God. Look at us go. So, so far, so good. So, so we're going to take a pause while yes. she folds and, and yeah. refrigerates, and then she's going to come back and tell us a saucy little murder, too. Oh, a saucy girl. All right. Please hold. We're back, sugar. Yes, we are. We folded and... <laughs> Blended and prayed over. We creamed and um, folded and mixed and folded. Yes. And, and now it's in the refrigerator. Yes. And but we have a little teeny tiny bit left that it wouldn't all fit in the pot. Oh, oh boo -boo. for us. <laughs> so my sister, because she's a genius, has put it in a little ramekin for us each. And then we've got a little dollop of Cool Whip because we don't have any whipped cream made yet. We're just not sufferers, y'all. We just don't we suffer. Just don't suffer. No, we don't. We don't deny. No, we don't deny ourselves. No. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to talk about murder. Yes, and not just any murder. This <gasps> is a murder. Oh, so like for real, for real. Um, I As don't know. Are the ones we do that aren't for real? I've never heard of any fake murders, but I don't. Know. Anyway, so this happens in Vienna, Austria. So last week I did one in Italy. Wow, you're still I'm still the over there because I need a vacay. Yeah. So I'm still over there. I'm in Vienna, Austria. I don't know. Is Vienna, Austria a good place to vacation? I mean, why wouldn't it? I think it'd be scenic. I don't know. The only thing I know anything about is like military bases over there. No, I think it's really um I think it's really scenic and beautiful over there. Fantastic. Yeah. You go and let me know how it goes. I'll let you know. Thanks. So I'm gonna so this um this has to do with this lady. You know I'm going to really murder these oh. names. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and murder this lady's name to get started. Her name is Goyd Sargi okay. Estebalas Carranza Zabala. Oh my God, I think I know her. I, I mean, you can't, you if, you if you know anybody by that name, it can only be one. I'm pretty sure I know her. She, thank God, goes by Esty. And that's what I will, <laughs> that, that is how I shall refer to her. So, yeah, that's what I call her. Yes, Esty. Well, because you're one of her friends. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to be her friend. Uh, so, um, well, I kind of do because she owns and runs a local ice cream parlor. Oh. Yeah. Look at Esty. <laughs> go, Esty. Go. <laughs> go, Esty. So, Esty and her husband had opened this ice cream parlor um, early in 2007, 2008. Um, he had invested some of his own money in it in support of his wife's new venture. But not long after the ice cream parlor opened, Esty's husband stopped coming around the ice cream parlor. So um, oh, maybe he didn't like the flavors. Yeah, well, if you only have like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, uh, people aren't going to come. Right. I don't know. So anyway, she told friends and acquaintances that he had gone to India to join a meditation group, and he would be gone for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh. he's on a meditation journey. Yeah. So in 2010, her hubby had still not come home from India. Oh, he's got a lot of meditation. <laughs> he's still meditating, He's got a lot to he's meditate still about. Got, he's still yes. thinking. So Esty starts dating, mm -hmm. which, I mean, he's gone for almost two years. Why wouldn't you? I would. Yeah. So um, she starts dating an Austrian refrigerator salesman. Oh, well, now that's convenient. How convenient. You get a little she's discount. smart. She's, she's a very smart woman. So she's very resourceful. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that relationship didn't last as long as she had hoped, and they broke up in 2010. Oh, man. Yes. So did next, they go on a retreat too? <laughs> no, they, they just broke up. Okay. Like they just broke up. So <laughs> anyway, mm, that's good. I just tasted that, and that's yummy, if I have to say so myself. So, next door to the ice cream parlor is a hair salon. Ew. Well, it's not in the ice cream parlor, Shoko. I still think it's going to get in the ice cream. It's not. Listen, it might. Remember in Richmond, there was a really great barbecue place that shared 
like the same building as a tire center. Very true. <laughs> and we didn't have a problem with that. Very barbecue. true. Very true. So I'm just saying it had a smoky flavor. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it was in a building that it housed many storefronts, but it was like an old building. So right. they shared a cellar, but then it was parsed out into different stores. Right. So next door was a hair salon. And um, in July of 2011, the salon owner hired a bricklayer to do some brick repair work for her. Right. Like around the foundation and stuff of, the, of her store. So he had to go down into the cellar that they shared to do some prep work for what he was doing. And when he's down there, he stumbles upon two large buckets filled with cement. So he's trying to move them out of the way. Oh. And he's like, God, these things are heavy. So your dog needs to have, uh, I mean, the he's better. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I did say last week. You're having some sort of a hissy fit. He has made one sound. You're acting like he's been crying the whole way through. He's it's, been crying the whole way. You're good. Okay. Anyway, the bricklayer um, goes in the cellar and he tries to move some buckets cement, right. and they're filled with cement. So they're so happy and he's trying to pick them up and he notices some chunky matter mixed up in the cement. He's oh. like, what the heck is that? So, he, you know, he pulls out his flashlight because he's like, what, what am I even looking at? What am I trying to move? And he notices some body parts. Oh, he's like, this is not good. Oh dear. Yeah. So, um, that's what the chunky matter was. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. So he quietly goes up to the salon and calls the popo. <laughs> so a little later, Esty is in the ice cream parlor, and she notices that there's a lot of police activity, you know, around the salon. Yeah, I'm sure she's thinking, what a bunch of slackers that have the police call them at the hair salon. Yeah, exactly. Like, what somebody do? Try to steal a haircut? Mm hmm so anyway, she notices that police activity, so she just quietly closes up her ice cream parlor, packs up and leaves and goes to Italy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time for me to go. <laughs> She's like, I'm feeling a road trip. I need to find some new flavors. <laughs> so, oh, she does. So police start to investigate <laughs> the cellar. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, they find several garden containers of hardened cement with what appears to be body parts oh. mixed in. Oh, dear. So they haul those away and um, for further investigation. And then they also find a freezer, of course, because it's an ice cream parlor. Well, sure. And there are several freezers down there. Mm. And so they're just like going through and opening the freezers, you know, to see yeah. what's in them and what stuff. What kind of flavors they, you got? Exactly. So one of them they opened up, and lo and behold, there's two severed heads of two men. Two. Yes, not one, but two, as well as some other body parts. Okay. So, not really what you would expect. No. They weren't mixed in with the ice cream. That's the good part. No. There was a specific freezer for specific things. Well, that's good. That is very that's good. good. Although it wasn't labeled correctly. She so may have somebody passed a health inspection. She could have because yeah. it was it, it wasn't labeled though. I think you have I to say label it. food only, non food only. Right. And I think that was what she missed. So, she, but then it's it's Austria. I don't know what their codes are. I don't either. So that's why I see in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> Well, that's boring. <laughs> so because the cellar was mainly used for storage for the ice cream parlor, and because the freezer with the heads in it was very similar to the ones with the ice cream in them, the cops decide maybe we should question the owner of the ice cream parlor. That would be smart. But they can't find her. Mm -mm. <laughs> because like I said, she had headed out. To, headed, that's funny. Uh -huh. um, she had headed out to um, Italy. <laughs> Turns out the very day that they found the containers um, of body parts, she had taken a cab. Oh. 300 miles away. <laughs> I'm just going to catch cab. To Udine, Italy. Okay. And I think I'm saying that right, but hopefully if I'm not, somebody will just very gently correct me and say, you idiot, it's not Udine. But it seems like it would be Udine. Right. So anyway, um, that's a hell of a cab ride. 300 <laughs> miles away. Like, what do you talk about? Right. 300 miles so, investigators actually go and find Esty in Udine. Oh, okay. 
So she stopped off there and she never left. She was living, when they found her, she was living with a street musician. Oh. A, a musician. A musician. A musician. Is that what they call them there? A musician, not a magician. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he was from the street. So, anywho, she was arrested and extradited back to Austria. Okay. At the time, Esty was two months pregnant with another man's baby. Oh, Lord. Not the street musician's baby. She gets around. She's resourceful. She's something. (laughs) He also, this, the baby mama, no, the baby daddy also lived in Vienna, Austria. Okay. And so she gets back to Vienna and she's charged with two counts of murder. Right. She is held without bond. But... Her baby daddy, whose name is Manfred, marries her while she's in prison because he's going to do the right thing. So while she's in prison awaiting trial, he marries her. She gives birth to their son. Okay. And um, and that was in January of 2012, and the baby is given to her parents to raise. Oh, right. I guess the baby daddy didn't really want the baby. Manfred said. He was like, oh, that's kind of a sticky situation. I'm going to stay out of so while in prison, Esty confesses to the authorities. I did it. I did it. But under Austrian law, who even, was it? Her husband and the refrigerator man? I don't get to that. Oh. Under Austrian law, even when there is a confession, the court must still examine all evidence. They still have a trial. Right. And then they decide, the court decides whether or not they will accept that guilty plea. Okay. Which I wish we did that here because we've had some instances where people have said, I'm guilty, when they really weren't guilty. Right. And they've been, there's been a flub up in the confession. Right, right. And maybe if they had gone through with the trial anyway, instead of just hopping to the sentencing, then right. they would uncover this person didn't really do it. Very true. So I kind of like that about Austria. So meanwhile, while the court is trying to figure out what the hell she did, the court appoints a psychiatrist to talk with Esty. <laughs> so the psychiatrist reports back to the court that Esty has been diagnosed with serious, I'm quoting here, quote, serious mental and psychological abnormalities. Oh, my. End quote. Oh, my. But she is still fit to stand trial. Okay. All right. And that psychiatrist also reports that there is a one in three chance that Esty would commit another murder if she is set free. Oh, oh. <laughs> No. In case you don't want to accept her guilty plea, let me just tell you, she's going to murder again. Oh, no. Yes. So the media nicknames Esty the ice cream killer. Oh, I like it. Yeah, me too. So in November of 2012, they finally go to trial, and Esty addresses the court, and she says, I can't say any other, I can't say any Anything other than I'm sorry that I took Holger's, which is her husband, Mm -hmm. and Manfred's, which was the boyfriend, lives. That's what she says. That's the opening statement that she says. Oh, wait. I can't say anything other than I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. So Manfred, who was the baby daddy? Yeah, she she likes that name, Manfred. So she dated another Manfred. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So she, she, she dated a Manfred and killed him. Okay. And then dated another Manfred and had a baby with him. Was that the refrigerator guy? Yes. So he, she did kill the, she she killed the refrigerator guy. She did. And then put him in a freezer. Yeah. Bitch. That's nice. I mean, that's just irony to the end. Wow. I know. I know. So the trial lasted four days. And Esty makes a full confession, and she said that Holger was a lazy bully. <laughs> and he refused to leave in 2008, even though they were divorcing. Yeah. But neighbors told prosecutors that he was holding out to get his investment in the ice cream parlor back. Sure. All he wanted out of that divorce was what he put in. Was just the investment he made into the ice cream parlor. Right. He said he had invested 100,000 euros. Right. Okay. She said it was only 10,000 and they they were at a stalemate. And so he's like, I'm not leaving here until I get my money back. Right. So she said that one night he's on his computer Mm -hmm. and she snuck up on him and shot him in the head. Well, for heaven's sake. It's what happens. It's what happens. That's not nice. No. And then she took his body to the cellar of the ice cream parlor. Mm Mm-hmm. Where she 
dismembered him with a chainsaw. Oh, Esty. First by beheading him. Oh, my. And then cutting his body up. Oh, dear. She planted the body parts in garden containers with cement mm. until she ran out of the um, garden containers mm. and cement. Oh, okay. And then she just said, I'm just going to put the head and the bigger body parts that don't really fit into the freezer. That makes I'll sense. I'll figure it out later. Yeah. And then she forgot about it. Oh, no. For she two got busy years. At, the, at the ice cream store. Well, she also got busy with the refrigerator. Guy, right, right. Yeah, right. getting the best deal she could on refrigerator yeah. freezers. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then some other dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got well, pregnant by him and then moved to Italy and found another dude. So she said that she, she did all of this in the cellar because the sound of the ice cream machines working all oh, night long right. would drown out the chainsaw. <laughs> Noise. Oh, and so funny. she felt comfortable doing that there because she's of the noise. Smart. So she's making ice cream the whole time she's yeah. got body parts. Yeah. What flavor would you like? Raspberry? No. Raspberry swirl with the eyeball <laughs> in it? Like, what are we serving up today? Oh. <laughs> so anyway, um, she also took bundles, bundles uh -huh. of air fresheners and put them all around the garden containers okay. and switched them out regularly so that it would hide the smell of the bodies decomposing. That's But I think smart. that once you put it in cement, how much does it decompose? It's kind of frozen in time, don't you think? I don't think so. You think it still rots? I do. Ew. I think it turns to just gel. Gel, like it'd be gelatinous. Gelatinous. Gelatinous, Real chunky word. material. Oh, that's my a, God. That's like moist. What if you, what if you moist, said gelatinous, moist, gelatinous, material. chunky material? Yes. That's how we describe our strawberry <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> Where is that rocky road? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, um, so then... In 2010, she said that her boyfriend, Manfred, this is Manfred 1. Manfred 1, the first. Yes, they got into a drunken argument. Mm. And because she said he was cheating, and he said he wasn't cheating. Oh. And she couldn't provide proof that he was cheating, but she just knew he was cheating. And she just knew. She just knew you know. it. When you know, you know. And he got really frustrated with her and just turned over in bed and went to sleep. Oh, my. That was a mistake. And she said when he started snoring... I pulled out my gun from under the mattress, I loaded it, and I shot him in the head. You're out, buddy. Yeah, you're out. You big cheater. You're off the island, you big snoring cheater, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then Plus she... Plus hard. He just needed a CPAP machine, and then maybe he, he, he might have left. left. Oh, I man, know. Fred. I know. i got to go get my CPAP going again. <laughs> I'm really nervous. <laughs> so... If nothing else, I can use it to um, stick it up my husband's nose. Oh, he's snoring. oh my. <laughs> okay. So anyway, she so then she hauls him back to the ice cream cellar. Wow. And because that had worked so well before, yeah. she just does it all over again. Yeah. She goes and gets more containers, more cement, a whole lot more air fresheners. She probably doesn't even, it's probably what her ice cream comes in. You know, you got to get the big buckets to make your yeah, ice those cream. those are cardboard. These were garden containers. No, they're not cardboard. No, they're not? No. no. They're like plastic buckets. Yeah. But these were, I mean, they described them as garden containers. Maybe people in Austria use those as garden containers. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So, anyway, um, she did everything. She made more gelatinous, um, <laughs> gelat, what did we say? Gelatinous, gelatinous moist, chunky, moist, gelatinous, gelatinous chunky, chunky matter. Yes. <laughs> she made more of that. And she also severed his head and put that in the freezer. Oh, nice. Yes. So, um, her... Oh, and then after that, she actually went for a manicure because she said her nails were wrecked. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? Yes. Having to deal with, like, mixing all I that cement. It. it would just really mess up your nails. So she yeah. went for a manicure the next day. Yeah. They were a wreck. So, anyway. They must not have been having a pandemic because. <laughs> no. My nails no. are wrecked. I can't get them. I have to tell you, I think that would have been the least of her problems. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't either. Bestie. 
So anyway, Esty ends up being sentenced to life to a mental institution. That's probably for the best. Yes. But in 2014, for some reason, she ends up getting transferred into a regular Vienna prison where she is still there today. She will never get out. Oh, God. That's a good choice. They will news. never get... Because there's a woman... And hopefully chance. they don't have her in, on kitchen duty. I, I know. No. She, I she know. makes ice cream for everybody. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Gelatinous ice cream. <laughs> So anyway, um, she'll never get out because remember, there's a one in three chance that she's, <laughs> she's going to do it again. Do it again. Yeah. So you might as well keep her in there. So. She probably got moved to the prison because she killed somebody in the insane asylum. I think that they figured out in this insane institution that she actually is pretty damn sane. Right. She's just evil. Right. And she just happens to have good resources. Yeah. And so that's probably why they moved her into the prison. My goodness. So anyway, that's my story. It was not a real long one, but I thought it was just Very really interesting, interesting yeah. in Vienna, Austria. Wow. Which I think Vienna is the capital of Austria, uh, but I'm not sure because no. I suck at geography. Yeah. Like, I'm not even sure I know the capital of Tennessee. It's okay. We don't need to get into capitals. I, I agree. Capital murder is the only capital we do. I like with. to get into a, a capital Bloody Mary. What I, I did, I gave I you know, one. I just got one. That's empty. Well, I know where there's more. Right. I have a little bit more, but not, I mean, I'm going to finish that right after this. Mm. So, anyway, that's the deal. Mm. That's the whole deal. That's the whole SD deal. That SD. She's something else, isn't she? She's something. Mm -hmm. So, goodness. anyway, I don't, I don't really want any ice cream today. No. I'm, I'm glad we're just doing some French silk yeah. pasta. And I ate mine while you were doing your story, mm -hmm. and I have to tell you, it is oh fantastic. Gosh. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. I'm I, so I proud of say, you. I think I did too. Tomorrow we have to do the whipped cream. Yes. And then we taste the whole thing together. Yes. I will say that I don't know how to make chocolate curls, so I'm putting the recipe said I could put chocolate chip, like mini chocolate chips, on top of it. Yeah. If I wanted to, so that's it's going to look a little bit different from a authentic French right. soap pop. So this is going to be a French-ish soap pop, <laughs> but it's the, it's the American version. Right. So anyway, um, I think it tastes real good, though. Oh, gosh. The flavor is, is amazing. And it's real creamy. It's, it's not smooth. It's not it's chunky. Not There's creamy. no chunky no, you matter. you did a really good job. So I think I did okay. It's not scrambled eggs. It is, <laughs> thank God. So happy for that. And I will tell you that I got this from... Sally's Baking Addiction, is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah, we I really did. like She's her. As a matter of fact, I just signed our email up for her um, oh, newsletter. Oh, good. Very so, good. Yeah. Nice. She gives you different recipes and then different kitchen tips and stuff like that. I thought yeah. I would enjoy that. So if anybody wants the recipe, you can either go on there or you can just write to us on our email, which is murder.sugarcoated. At gmail.com. And trout is making a fuss because he knows it's almost to the end and don't forget we have our website up and you can listen directly from the website which is wonderful and that is called sugarcoatedpod.com sugarcoatedcod no no <laughs> no sugarcoated no. cod no. you don't do fish sugar <laughs> we don't do no cod fish now people are be like they do cod fish sugar coated pod dot com. Oh, I need another blend. Yes. Mary. And don't forget our Facebook page and our and our Instagram. Yes. Follow us on Instagram at Sugar Coated Murder. And you can find us on Facebook, Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Yeah. Just come find us. Um, email us. Reach out to us. Let us know you're listening. We so appreciate everybody that yes. listens. We're, ha we're still having fun, and we hope y'all are still having fun. Yes, and I want to make mention um, make, make our friend mm -hmm. Andrea. Yes, that was on our podcast. Has been on our podcast before. She and some of her colleagues have started a podcast oh. called Magical Mystical Journeys. Magical Mystical, Mystical Journeys. Journeys. Um, that's Andrea St. Amand. Uh, Katie Valentine and Amy Renee Krause. Nice. So they talk about angels and saints and more things, mystical, mystical. magical. <coughs> they tackle Sorry. touchy top touchy topics <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that, like that being mm -hmm. may illuminate in us or how historically the figure may have been portrayed. Nice. Their episodes include a meditation and loads of personal experiences mm -hmm. with spirit. Yes. All the podcast places. Yeah, Podbean. iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or TuneIn. TuneIn means you can ask Alexa to play Mystical, Magical, what's it? Mystical, Magical, 
No, people, people, <laughs> listen, don't listen to her. Don't listen to me. Magical, mystical journey. You're the one that started. No, you're the one that tried to say we were doing clubfish. <laughs> Magical Mystical Journeys. Give them a listen. Yes. We love Support it. Support them. Yeah. When local um, people get together and they want to start podcasting together. and It's nice. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. And podcasting community needs to support, support one another. And, and we do. We're we support them. her fully. And we hope you all do too. Give her a listen. Give her a shout out. We, miss, show we her wish y'all a great deal of success. Yes. And, and we are sending all the sugar-coated love to them. Sugar-coated love to... Magical Mystical Journeys. Yes. Yes. And guys, we just love you. We, we do. just freaking love you. I hope y'all have a great week. Have a good week. Y'all stay sweet. Yes. And we're going to eat some pie. All right. Bye now. Bye. All right. Now we got our pie. We have our pie. We're ready. I've made the homemade whipped cream, which was really easy. And then I just plopped it on there and spread it out and then sprinkled some mini chocolate chips on it. And so. it's gorgeous. Hopefully it, it's passable. It's nothing like you oh see in the gosh. magazine. It's but. exactly what I've seen in restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh my God. I know. I think I did it. You did it. I can't believe it. It's so exciting. Oh my gosh, I don't have to like just wait until I go to that one restaurant in right. the area that has the good chocolate yeah. set pie. Oh my gosh. You can just plan I for it. I wish y'all were here. Oh gosh, I wish everybody could be sitting around the table with us having some chatting. pie and yes. chatting and having some really good sugar-coated murder time. Yeah. So Maybe when the pandemic's over, we can start doing a little bit of that. Yes, definitely. Having a fan, a fan over for recordings and if nothing else for our long distance fans mm -hmm. maybe we can start doing like cooking time together where we send everybody the recipe we all plan the ingredients and we get online and do it together oh, that's a great idea yeah and you and i can talk about murder while we're all baking together right very good so anyway guys y'all stay sweet we love you to pieces and we'll talk to y'all real soon we're gonna gobble up this pie bye bye now Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.